on building a terrarium for my parents for Christmas. All right, I know. To be honest with you, I'm not that great of a son. I'm a little bit of a loner. I'm not that much of a, like a warm person, but I but what I want to do for my parents this year is I want to I want to give them something that's that comes truly from my heart. Is this, is this making you feel flipping warm inside? Cuz it's making me feel flipping warm inside. The first terrarium I ever made on this channel was this one right back here. Let me pop it open. You always get a bit of a better view. I haven't really cleaned the glass off. I could have done a better job of preparing this little guy for your, for its big uh it's big intro, but it's actually one of my favorite terrariums. And you want to know why? I made that terrarium on this channel. I posted it to my little my little text group with my family in it, with my mom and my dad and everything like that. And my mom went, oh, Ryan, well, that's the most bloody beautiful terrarium I've ever seen in my whole entire life. That's my mom's impression. It's, a, it's an impression of my mom, but it's not a real impression. That's not actually how she sounds. I'm going to be 100% honest in this vlog. 100% honest in this plant vlog. The thing I'm worried most about, that the thing that I'm worried most about this build is that is I don't get to put it on my own flipping grow shelf. I'm not gonna get to experience it. I'm not gonna get to watch it grow and it pains me. I went through this whole phase in my life where I was like building plant. I wanted to do a plant store. I had this dream of like, of like taking, you know, plants and finding them with the perfect pot. And I would scour around in like thrift stores and stuff like that. And I went through this whole phase in my life where I was where I was just planning on being like a plant guy that sold plants, diving into the to the market, to the marketplace about distributing things and ordering things and importing and exporting. I don't even know what I'm talking about because that's kind of how I felt. Let me think about for a second why I'm actually talking about that. I remember problem with like getting into the whole plant world is I don't want to get rid of my plants. That's, that's the problem. I get so attached especially when I build something like a terrarium, like the carnivorous capsule that, uh, that we saw most recently, my most recent terrarium, the air plant arium. Am I just doing an impromptu showing off of all my terrariums at this point? Even the diamond, which is just getting completely taken over by ficus pumula. But it's hard for me to build something like this and to just simply give it away. But that's the point of this video. That's the point of this video. I want to show off I just want to show my love. I want to show my love to my parents. I want to show my appreciation to them for, for everything that they've done for me over the years. I've gotten to this point, haven't I? I've gotten, am I a little bit Looney Tunes? Sure, sure. But am I a little bit Looney Tunes in sort of a good way? I like to think so. And if I am Looney Tunes in a little bit of a good way, is that not due to my parents? Well, let's get to the point where I'm showing you what actual vessel we're using for this terrarium build. I told you that my my very first terrarium build, this one right here. Oh Ryan, that terrarium back there is so beautiful. So this is going to be our vessel for our new terrarium. It's going to be inspired by this one back here, but it's not going to be identical. Of course, every terrarium build is completely unique. I'm trying to think of what I'm going to say next, but I am going to use this one. It's obviously gonna come in very important. This is our modeling clay. This is how we're gonna make our sticky mossy wall. Speaking of making mossy walls, maybe we should decide on the moss that we're gonna use. Show you off this, uh, this mood moss here. So I wanna use a little bit of that. Now this is, uh, I think this was sold to me as just some sort of a sheet moss. It's been so long, I honestly don't remember, but we're gonna use a lot of this. I definitely wanna use some of my my tree moss over here. I'm not even quite sure what this one is, but we're gonna throw it in there. And uh, the best part about this is that it'll just kind of look different. It'll stand out. It'll be a little pocket in our terrarium that kind of hopefully grows into something, something weird that stands out. Let's dig around in here. That's a hard transition. What I've been thinking is that I really wanna use some of these little nano pieces of, um, these are just like little driftwood, little nano pieces of driftwood. I found these on Amazon actually, believe it or not. And I just think I've been wanting to do a project with them. I think they're gonna look really cool in kind of like a sticky mossy wall terrarium. And that's why we're gonna throw, yeah, just a variety of those onto that tray. Whoo, whoo, whoo. I think we're done. I think we're ready to go. We're gonna put our, uh, we're gonna put our thinking caps on we're gonna imagine, we're just gonna imagine butterflies and rainbows and all the beautiful things 
that make terrariums come to life. We're going to imagine all of that floating around in our head right now. And is this, a, is this going to be a decent transition? Should I just kind of close my eyes and wave my body around until we finally... And holy moly, we've transitioned into the project room. I can't believe it. I've even got the ingredients that were waiting on the garage, just waiting right here for us. It saved us a whole trip. It's magic. All I've got right here is a little bit of uh, black lava rock that we're going to use as our base layer or as our drainage layer. And I've got what we're going to use as our, you know, kind of substrate or our ground. And that's just peat moss. There's one thing, there's one thing that we've got to do. And I just want to add a little bit of wood chips to this, uh, to our already existing, what I said was peat moss. I want to put a little bit of wood chips in there. You know why I want to do that? I'm going to throw a little bit into, uh, into our terrarium mix, into the terrarium that I'm building for my parents for Christmas. What a sweet, what a sweet flipping thing. Every time I do something nice for someone, for some weird reason, I have to like joke about it and make it like it's like, it's the, I, I joke about how, what a huge deal it is to me. Because really, to be honest with you inside, inside, I don't want to smack my chest because I didn't want to make the mic sound all weird, but inside I really do. It feels like a huge, it feels like a huge thing for me. It means a lot that I'm actually making this terrarium for my parents. But in the spirit of giving a gift and not, and not selfishly caring about, about what it's doing for me, I try to kind of, you know, stuff that stuff all down the side. But instead what I do is I make jokes about it and I make light that, oh yeah, I care so much. But really, I mean, really secretly, I do. Did I pick you up for that whole segment? Was that actually worth it? So I've got my substrate made. I've got a little bit of wood chips in here. I've got some peat moss, a little bit of plant fertilizer. Again, not very important. I've got some dry sphagnum moss right here that we're going to use soon. I've got some uh, gravel. I've got some black lava rock. This is what we're going to use as our drainage layer. You know, we always got to have a drainage layer in the bottom of your terrarium. If, you see, if you've seen any of my previous builds, you know that the reason that we put a drainage layer in there is to prevent a mucky mess. So now we've got our drainage layer in there, preventing that mucky mess, of course. Next up, got a little bit of dry sphagnum moss. This is actually my favorite sphagnum moss. I'm tempted to go and look up where I actually got this stuff, just so I could kind of endorse it. And it's just the most beautiful sphagnum moss. I get it from this place on Etsy. So it's actually from a place called the Plum Blossom PDX, New Zealand Long Fiber Sphagnum Moss. It's just clean, it's beautiful, it's wonderful to work with, I love it. I, I want to actually contact them and ask if I can order just a big old jumbo bulk bag of it. So that's kind of my next step. I've been thinking about all these ingredients that I've been using in these terrariums and in my potted plants and everything. And I've been thinking, you know what, why am I buying these tiny little bags for $12 when I could probably buy just a huge jumbo bag for like $50 and then I'll have, you know, I'll have the ingredients to go around all the time. Because one of the most painful parts of all this process is actually ordering, ordering stuff continually. I've found that making terrariums and, you know, raising plants and doing all sorts of stuff is just so much more delightful when you've got an entire, uh, when you've just got your arsenal kind of already set up and ready to, ready to build. I hate to say this because it sounds kind of cheesy, but when the inspiration strikes, you just want to get moving on it. That's how this stuff works. So when the plants finally say, let's do this, you want to do it. Well, hold the flipping phone. I'm shooting ahead of myself. I must have got far, I must have got far too excited. I almost forgot that this terrarium was a mossy wall terrarium. And normally with a mossy wall terrarium, I like to kind of lay them down and, you know, get moss all over the walls and stuff. I guess since we've already stepped ahead, since we've already put the drainage layer and our protective layer of sphagnum moss in here, I guess, I guess we're just going to have to kind of, kind of deal with it. We're going to have to stick our muddy, uh, our muddy mess all over the back of the walls with everything standing up, upright and perfect. I'm not willing. I'm actually literally not willing to take those things back out of this terrarium. You know, that's how impromptu this is. That's how real life this, uh, this terrarium build is, this Christmas present that I'm making for my parents for Christmas. I know, cue the awes and everything like that. But I'm not willing to take out this, uh, this drainage layer and start again. So let's get to the fun part of this video. The thing that I was looking forward to the most that was taking our modeling clay. This is my own recipe. I came up with this all on my own. It's been working for a bunch of, a bunch of terrarium so far. So we take a big old handful of this modeling clay. This is just natural like modeling clay that I got on Amazon. I don't know, what do people use this stuff for? I guess they use it to make, make teacups or saucers. 
something along those lines. You know what I'm using it for though? I'm using it to create mossy walls in my terrariums because I find that it's the perfect substance to kind of create. I'm always talking against a mucky mess, but in this situation, in this specific, not Pacific, specific situation, I'm actually using a mucky mess, but in a very controlled manner. But nonetheless, we've got a bunch of our modeling clay right here. We're gonna throw a couple handfuls of our peat moss or our substrate, whatever we're using. We're just trying to make it look kind of muddy. We're gonna pump up our sprayer right here. We're gonna give this thing the best bath it's ever had in its dang life. Now we get to do the best part. Now we get to dig our fingers in here and we get to really get messy. We get to feel the water kind of squish through there. We get to work this modeling clay in. We get to basically start creating just mud. One of the things when I was younger that made me feel important, that made me feel like I had a skill was the fact that I really I knew how to use computers well. I still know how to use computers well. I love editing videos. I love doing all sorts of things with computers. I do all sorts of little uh, things I've programmed in my life. I've built video games. I just, I really enjoy kind of the intricacies of computers. And in fact, not only do I enjoy the intricacies of computers, but I do think that computers are kind of the gateway to show us what's actually going on here, to show us. It's, it's almost, it all, understanding how a computer works, at least in my life, and especially, especially when I slapped a VR helmet on for the first time in my life, what that really did is it kind of unveiled not necessarily the simulation that we're living in. I'm not going to make any sort of, uh, you know, any sort of, you know, prophecies or anything like that. But what I am going to say is that understanding how video games work, understanding how computers work, how programming works, understanding how all that stuff works, it just makes you, it makes you understand that, hey, you know, creating something like that, creating something like what we're living in right here wouldn't be, and so it might be a little bit far-fetched for our current technology, but it wouldn't, eh, it wouldn't be too, it wouldn't be necessarily too far-fetched. To do a shot where I was squishing this through my fingers, because how flipping intoxicating is the sound of that? Oh, maybe I should get it closer to my, We've got my mud in place, ready to put our moss wall in. Can't believe I forgot that that's what this terrarium was going to be all about. But you know what? I got a little bit too excited and we put the base in and all that. <clears throat> that's okay. Because it's never too late to start the mudding process. And what we're going to do for the mudding process is just take globs of mud, you know, from our big plate that we made down here. Can you see that in the camera? Yeah, I think you can. And we're going to find, just like in our original terrarium, we're going to do, we're going to mud both of these back panels as well as this top little triangle here. And the key that I've learned with mudden, the first key is easy. You take a big old glump, a big old literal glump. Yes, a glump, not clump. And you want to get it in here. And you just want to liberally spread this crap all over the place. You don't want to be stingy with your mud. And the second thing you want to know about mudden is that take your time, keep, keep one of your hands clear, keep a rag in the background of you so that you're not getting fricking mud, mud little splatters all over, the, uh, all over the sides of the terrarium that you don't want to have mud on. Not only will that make it easier, but you know what it also kind of does for you? It also kind of turns your little terrarium build here into a, into a bit of a game. It makes it fun. It makes it when you do get a little splatter of mud on a place that you didn't want it, it goes, ah! Oh! And it feels kind of like you lost a life or something, you know? You gotta turn every moment into, uh, into something worthy of, uh, of just kind of laughing at it. I think that's what I'm trying to say. All the glass, all the things that we don't want to see in the background, we want to cover it with muddy mud that we can stick moss to. And, uh, you know, we just want to start feeling, we just want to start feeling natural at this point. We want to start imagining that we're looking at a little slice of nature rather than a, uh, than a glass box. But you do notice the glass box. There's no hiding it. In fact, that's why I choose these geometric terrariums that have this nice kind of bright or dark black you know, outline on them is because I want, I want to accentuate that. I want to create little picture frames, little, little places that you can kind of peek into and see what's going on down in here. Little works of art but from all different, you know, geometric angles. And the coolest part, it's that mix between human 
and nature that 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 it's the fact that whatever we create in this terrarium right here couldn't have possibly happened there's no way that mother nature herself i'm daring you i'm daring you up there mother nature but there's no way at least in my opinion and i don't know much but that mother nature could have created the thing that we're about to create but you know what mother nature's doing she's laughing at me right now she's laughing at me because she can hear me talking and she's saying by golly ryan you just don't flip and see it i am you and you're creating the flipping slice of nature for me so you know i don't know let that let that kind of sink into your brain that's where i've gotten at this point that's what i'm thinking about as i'm building this uh this terrarium or at least that's what the mud or at least that's what the mudding of the walls is making me think about holy moly did i really just go there in this video that i am an extension of mother nature herself and that this despite the fact that it looks like it's in a uh, in a very human like geometric terrarium but this itself is nature that's the beauty that's the beauty of all of this i hope i hope that makes sense to you if it makes sense to you it makes sense to you you know what we're going to sit back here i'm going to finish my mudding in silence probably not silence because i'll i just can't i've always got to fill the silence with something but i think we've come to the point where i've uh, i feel like i've got enough content i feel like i've shown you what we're doing I've shown you how to make the mud. I've shown you how we're sticking the mud. I've been meaning to find a way to talk about this in one of my videos for some time, but a lot of people, uh, a lot of people have told me over the years that, oh, Ryan, you're kind of the, uh, you're like the Mr. Rogers. Ryan, you're the Bob Ross. You're the Bob Ross of, of terrariums. I love it. I take it as a great compliment when people tell me that, but I also wonder, you know, what does that, what does that mean exactly? Does that mean that I'm a boring person? Well, hello again, people from the past. It's me, Ryan, from the future. Now that we're in the future, now that we've got the muddy wall completed on the backs of this terrarium, you would think, you would think it's time to start adding some moss and some living things, you know, being a mossy wall terrarium that it will eventually become, but it's actually not. In this case, like I said, I've got all these little nano pieces of, uh, of wood that I got that I ordered. I just thought they were cool. I thought they would be really neat. And I've been so excited to use them in a project. I used a few of them in my carnivorous uh, capsule terrarium project, but I've been excited to just kind of really get a good, to really get a good feel of these things. Like look at this one, for example. Look how interesting these things are. You know what I really would love? I'm just gonna put this in right here. I would really love at some point in my life, hopefully this channel gets to a point where I can actually visit, where the heck are they making this kind of stuff? I wanna know that knowledge, that's the knowledge that I want to know. I'm so sick of all the boring knowledge that everybody wants to know. I don't care about stupid things. I just want to know things like where the flipping frick does this kind of nano wood come from? Anyways, I'm going to grab you. We're going to go back into a POV. It's time to actually start putting some of this wood. I'm going to jam it into some places on the walls of this terrarium. Do you see why I probably shouldn't have put the, uh, the bottom in first so I could kind of lay this thing down and do this whole step? What it's really doing is it's impeding my ability to, uh, to give you POV shots because it's making it really hard to do everything one-handed because I can't actually press down into it since I've got to keep it kind of standing up like a skyscraper. I felt like in my previous terrarium build, the carnivorous capsule terrarium, I waited too long to actually turn the light on and start illuminating the inside. And this time, maybe I jumped the gun a little bit, but you know what, we've got it on. We've, we're officially using the lights. I want to use, I think, this piece to start us off. And again, I'm just trying to kind of get a weird little organic kind of spidery look going on in here. Sorry, I'm rambling on here. I'm just, I'm literally trying to give you the process that I'm thinking about. I want to have this bottom part that's kind of more bulbous sticking towards the bottom of the terrarium. And I want to save the upper space for, we're going to have some things going on up there, but I want to just sort of save it for, so let's take some of this mud and you know, we all know this is made of our modeling clay, so I'm gonna kind of fold it over some of this, just to end up holding it into place. We're gonna take a step back. I'm gonna spin it around for you so you can see it in there, our first piece. And uh, yeah, maybe we should go for something next, right down in here. I want to, I want to so bad, I'm trying to figure out right now how to give you a better view of this. I've got the camera literally lying on the table. I can't get any better. I'm gonna use this Y. Right in here, I wanna have these little jetty parts sticking out. I wanna have this one kind of pointing in this direction. 
and we just want to get this thing shoved right in there. Ugh. Excuse my hands in the way, I know. I wish I didn't have these big old sausagey hands getting all up in the way of the, uh, of the good shots. If only there was a way to make my hands invisible once in a while. I think I like this angle so bad. I'm going to do another shot right from it. Hopefully, it's, hopefully it is actually as good as I think it is. Because I'm just kind of feeling like we're on a roll with sticking these wood things in here. I'm feeling like everything is coming together so perfectly. Have I said anything is my favorite part yet? Because if I have not, then we're moving on to my most favorite part of the entire terrarium build. And that's because not only do I like to get my fingers dirty, but the thing I like to get my fingers dirty with has always been moss. It's always been you, moss. I love you. I love the smell of it. I love how it smells like a forest floor. I love the look of it. I love how you can just squish it into things. Every single one of my videos, at least every one of my terrarium videos, has ranted and raved about what I think about moss. Where should I put you? Should I put you for a far away shot? Yeah, I think I'm gonna do some of it without you actually seeing what I'm gonna do. And then I'll, of course, I'll bring you back in for a POV or, or something like that. But there might be something else nice that I wanna say about moss or or who knows, who knows, who knows what'll come from this. So we're back to the part where we get to put our fingers in the moss, eh? Where we get to stick all the moss to the walls, eh? Yes, that's the part we're at. Why am I acting so ridiculous in this video? I don't know. I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking, Ryan, you are acting a little bit extra ridiculous in this video. Is it because, is it just because you're finally getting to experience the magic of the moss and the muddy walls and just creativity in general all over again? Or is it because you know you're making this terrarium for your parents and you're going to say, hey, look, I also made a video for it. And you just want to show off a little bit and you want to. You want to make sure that it's entertaining and you want to you want to you want your your mommy and your daddy to say oh they're so proud of you you were so hilarious ryan when you made our terrarium is it all that or is it the fact that you know at some point you just flipping you just stop caring about about anything you stop caring about what anybody thinks about anything you stop caring about what the moss thinks about you as you press it in the muddy walls and you just start kind of doing whatever you flipping well feel like doing i stuck a piece on the wall in there i felt almost an electricity surge through my body and now i've uh and now i've completely gotten into that uh to that mode where I, i'd rather just explain that this is the zen part of the terrarium build i'm gonna be honest you're harshing my zen a little bit but <laughs> I'd be in there and making me feel like I got to keep saying something. So I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I'm going to do in the spirit, in the spirit of the Zenness, of just what terrariums, what plants in general bring to our lives. I always like to respect what plants have done for me in my life. And in the spirit of what plants have done for me in my life, I'm going to cut the camera off now. I'm going to do a little bit of mossing without you. I'm going to surprise you. And then when I pop you back in there though, it's going to be magnificent. It's going to be a surprise. This whole video has been full of snaps and snips and all of this sort of stuff. I'm using all my tricks. I'm using everything I've got. So in the spirit of that, let's to the next scene. Because just when you thought I was going to finish this video without you and not kind of drone on a little bit more about sticking moss to a muddy wall, well, you were wrong. I love sticking moss to a muddy wall and I'll drone on about it as long as I'm breathing, living and breathing. Maybe after I'm living and breathing. Sometimes I even ask myself, are we even really living and breathing? Do you ever ask yourself that? Have you ever asked yourself, what happens if I just didn't need to breathe anymore? I don't know. What does that even mean, right? That's the question. That's the point. That's the reason I say it. It's to make you go, what, what the heck is this guy even talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about. That's the best part about making terrariums is you start rambling off and you start spouting off about things. So you don't even know what you're talking about. And the really... Best part about all of it is you're, all you're really looking to do is looking for places to stick some moss. Ta-da! I bet you didn't expect me to come off my lazy chair back there and show you a nice up close of all the moss that we've been doing. I'm not shining the light in there, but hopefully, hopefully it's okay. But we're finally at the point in the video where we're ready to basically get back to where we started before I made the mistake of not doing the, uh, the mossy wall. And we're finally ready 
to add the substrate. Not that this back wall is necessarily finished. In fact, we're going to take this opportunity while we've still got this back wall nice and clear to get in here with our tweezers. And by poking things around, you basically just get to expose, you know, all the little nooks and crannies that you want to be exposed with these cool little wood pieces that we stuck in here, but that the moss is, is covering up. So that's, again, the best part about working with moss is that you can literally just take clumps of it, shove it into anywhere you want. It's going to blur out your edges. It's going to make everything look organic. And not only that, but it's going to be amazing. It's going to be the, your most favorite plant to watch in your terrarium because it just kind of sprouts and grows and reaches toward your light. Now I finally think we're back at that, at that point. Crisis averted, detour done. It's time to add the substrate to this terrarium. And that means, that means all sorts of more fun stuff is coming up. Can you wait? I can almost wait. We're about to get ready to go to the, back to the plant room. But let's not jump ahead and let's get some of the substrate in this terrarium. Let's do this the right way. Yeah. Take some of our substrate here. Again, some peat moss, a little bit of plant fertilizer just in case we need it. Some wood chips to kind of make this stuff nice and quick draining. You know what else we're going to add, actually? We're going to add one more thing. We're going to add a little bit of our dry sphagnum moss into this as well. If I haven't made myself clear in any of my previous videos, one of the things I like most, but really all of this stuff is, uh, I don't know, I guess it's just the way that it all feels on my fingers. I just love kind of building these things. And I promise you that if you tried, if you don't, if you don't love building these things, if you, if you build these things already, then you know what I'm talking about. But if you, if you don't build these things, just try it out and let me, uh, let me promise you that you're going to enjoy all the scents and the feelings on your fingers as well. Smoosh is just a fun word to say, especially when you're doing things like taking a handful of dirt, putting it in your terrarium back here and, uh, you know, dare I say, smooshing, smooshing it all in, giving it a nice good smoosh right into the back corner there. We're going to go back into the plant room and we're going to finally pick some plants because to be honest with you, I've had all sorts of plants waiting in this thing, just waiting for something waiting for something to do, waiting for some place to go. And I think I'm gonna choose this one right here. I forget even what it's called. It's some sort of a purple passion. You see how purple and passionate it is? I think my mom is gonna love the shade of that and the color of that. I think it's gonna look good against the moss. We're gonna use that one. We'll probably use some ficus pumila right here. So we'll bring that along as well. And then maybe what do you think would go better with our purple passion? Do you think this begonia that I've been wanting to find a place to do with? Now, like I said, I've got some special ideas for this purple one because I actually noticed something on this when I was looking at it earlier and it kind of gave me the idea for all of this. Look really close. Look really close at this purple passion plant. Can you see all those little roots that are starting to dangle out of the stems right there? Well, that made me think that this plant doesn't necessarily need to just be anchored into the ground of our terrarium. Maybe what we could do is we could use this thing, similar to how we've got these wood pieces kind of vining all up the background of this terrarium. I was thinking that maybe what we could do is take this purple passion plant, but instead of sort of making it front and center and taking over the entire, the entire thing, kind of becoming the centerpiece, maybe what we could do is just shove it right there in the back and sort of weave it along inside of these uh, these little pieces of wood that we set in here. So I'm going to clear off some of these old dangly roots for you so they're not getting in my way or yours. We're just going to squish it in as far as we can. We're going to be a little rough with the plant at this point, but that's kind of the point. We're going to see how, how high we can go. So we're going to shove this plant right into the back. I'm going to be brutally brutal with this one. Now what's next? Obviously you gotta stay up close because we're working on the, uh, on the substrate of the terrarium here. We've still got a couple more plants to go. We've got this little begonia of some sort. I don't even remember the name. It's all smooshed in, ready to go. Now, the reason that I like this piece of wood so much is because it kind of looks like a little foot. And I feel like when I shove it into this terrarium, it's gonna kind of crawl down into the front here. It's gonna give me a lot of nice depth and it's just going to kind of frame everything into this into this terrarium nicely. But hey, you tell me what you think. Let's get this thing positioned. I almost want to hide the bottom stem, this big old root 
on the bottom of this uh, begonia back here. I still want to add a lot of moss and things like that to the ground here because no, uh, no terrarium is complete without having a little bit of moss in the background. And not to mention, just like on the walls, this kind of finishes everything off. You know, all the things that we've been doing for this entire video, I'm going to continue doing that. And I'm only going to show you a far away shot because the best part of this video is coming up. The thing that we've been waiting for the entire time, the shot that we've been waiting for the entire time, the final shot, the shot where we move this thing back into the plant room, when we have everything all done, when we illuminate it, when we light this thing up, when we bring it to life, that all is finally coming. As soon as I finish uh, adding some moss to there and do a little bit of detail work and even clean up the glass and all that stuff. But this time on this video, we're going to skip that. But nope, there's one more thing I forgot to say. There's one more thing I just possibly couldn't do without you before we transition back to the plant room. And that's because it's the first time that I've gotten the opportunity to use these little tree moss things that I've had. My light over there even died on me. I don't even have any battery left to shine and illuminate this terrarium as I do this. So you're just going to have to trust me that we're putting this thing into the perfect little spot back in there. And I just wanted to point that out. I wanted to point out two things. Number one, I haven't said this any time this video, and I'm proud that I haven't, but I'm only using an odd number of these little tree ferns. One, two, three. And number two, I wanted to have them kind of poking out around that little wood. I just feel like they give it the best, the best texture ever as they kind of, you know, come up around the bottom of that stump. It just makes it look a little bit more like the, like the forest floor to me, doesn't it? I promise you the finale of this thing right over there, right around that corner. It's going to be awesome. This thing's going to look stunning. It's going to be so exciting. I'm not going to want to give it away to my parents for their Christmas gift this year, but I'm going to do it anyways, because that's the kind of person I am. That's why I made this thing. But no, there's always something left to do before we head into the plant room and finalize this video. I know I promised you a nice foggy shot the next one, but I forgot a couple steps. Okay. I forgot a couple steps in the beginning of this video. I forgot a couple steps now. The first I could never do without you because we got to spritz this thing down and it's the best part about owning a terrarium. It's coming in here once in a while, but not too often. Believe it or not, these closed geometric environments aren't going to need a whole lot of spritzing because it's going to hold, and this is its own little universe. It's going to hold all of this water in here and it's just going to sort of recycle it in and of itself. But nonetheless, once in a while, you're going to have to come in here and you're going to get to spritz this thing. And the reality of this terrarium back here is that I'm not going to get to see it very much. We're not going to get to see this very much anymore. That's why I'm going to end this video with such a bang and put smoke in there and the whole nine yards. Oh yeah. Oops. Oh yeah. Is there a better one of all that mossy smoke pouring out of it? I'll give you one more shot of the smoky, the smokiness where I don't have to worry about the lights. See what we can do. See what I can do for you. I'm not great at the smokiness. But you know, I can do a little something like that. Yeah. Enough of the smoke. Enough of the trying to end it with a fancy camera shot. Let's open the door. Let me get you in here. Let me show you some of the things that I'm talking about. One thing you didn't see me add is all of those little sprigs of tree moss back there. That's actually the thing that's become the most exciting to me about this whole terrarium. Actually, there's one more thing that's more exciting to me about that. Just remember those mossy sprigs because I love the texture that they bring to the, uh, to the surface or the ground of this terrarium. And then of course, I mean, if I can just bend you up here, the wood textures just kind of vine up to the top. It's just something that you're gonna be able to stare into once in a while. You can be able to kind of dig in there and really look at the fine details of what's happening where, and what's growing how, and all of that sort of stuff. And it's just going to be a fun thing to kind of watch grow. That was one that was, uh, that was kind of close to my soul there, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll enjoy the next. There's all sorts of new things to come. If I don't see you before the holidays, I hope you have a wonderful one. Some days I've got so many ideas that my brain literally hurts thinking about them. But for a moment, but for a moment, it's time to relax. But whatever happens next, I'll see you then. And let me give you one more. I don't know if I gave you enough of a, uh, of a close-up shot of this terrarium. I just want to make sure I got enough, enough angles of this thing before we actually end this video. So there's right from the top. It's a little bit dewy. 
my absolute favorite. The thing that I didn't really see coming with this terrarium is just all of those little tree moss spouts. I wasn't actually gonna add them for a minute and then I decided to kind of throw them in there last minute and it just kind of brings that entire surface to life. Who knows what's gonna happen with all of them. That's gonna be the fun thing about watching this. That's gonna be the beauty of this gift. That's why I did this. And thanks for hanging with me while I did it. Aww.